Summer days remind me of Fallout New Vegas. It is the most nostalgic piece of video game literature I have in my memory banks. I seriously would only watch New Vegas on YouTube for years. Back when I was a wee lad, I never owned an Xbox 360 or PC, so the only time I could watch New Vegas was to watch other people play them. Now I'm not sure how I got hooked onto the Fallout New Vegas, but I do know the creators got me injected with the Desert Sun of Nevada. Um, you know. Oh, look how much of a dork I look. <laughs> Al Chestbreach brought me into the world of Fallout with his raunchy humor, storytelling, and quick wittiness. His Fallout New Vegas modded playthrough is a very long series, but one of his best. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John. This is many a I also thoroughly enjoyed Many a True Nerd series on New Vegas You Only Live Once, Jay Sawyer's Survival Mode, and Kill Everything Run. It was a great experience and showed me the multiple ways of finishing quests. Fallout 4 has a lot of strange places. Many of these are revealed to us in tantalizing icons on our pit boy. Finally, the huge one was then the Apple, who brought so much lore and theories to me about the entire Fallout universe. These YouTubers brought a new world to me, and when I finally got Fallout New Vegas for the Xbox 360 at GameStop for $17.99, there was no stopping me playing this game non-stop. Throughout my high school life, I played this game repeatedly, and had the radio songs memorized to a T. My parents might have gotten irritated, but I still loved every second of it. The game is brilliant from the cast, quests, and maybe the combat. Today, I am excited to explore this world with all of you, as I talk about my likes and dislike of New Vegas. So, buckle up, and let's traverse the game that was rigged from the start. In the late 90s, Fallout 1 and 2 was created by Interplay Entertainment. It was an isometric point-and-click action fever dream. Later on, they made tactics as well. But around the time of the year 2007, Todd Howard came into their office and said, Give me Fallout, and I will make millions. And well, you won't be bankrupt. Interplay looked up to them and said, Alright. Bethesda created Fallout 3, and it became a critical and commercial success when it was released in 2008. So to continue their success, they wanted to create a sequel. But since their own developers were busy making Skyrim, they brought in Obsidian Entertainment, a company founded by former members of Interplay's Black Isle Studios. Now the development is long and extensive, and to be honest, me rehashing the entire Wikipedia page is not fun. But you know what is fun? My opinion. So I found out Fallout development history by watching The Making of Fallout New Vegas. Now it never went into huge detail, but for a small brain middle school Liam, I loved it. The development cycle Obsidian had was 18 months, which was short. Though with that short amount of time, they still were able to pack 65,000 lines of dialogue and 36 hours of solid content. If you want to complete every quest, then almost 140 hours. Tragically, tons of content had to be cut, and unfortunately it wasn't well optimized in the beginning. Now your game still can crash, and there are glitches, which is annoying, but it's not as often as I expected. If you want to see more information about Fallout New Vegas, I highly recommend checking out Triangle City Channel, who explores cut content in various video games, especially New Vegas. The protagonist is a courier working for the Mojave Express, a postal service that serves New Vegas and the surrounding Mojave Desert. 
The game begins as the courier is ambushed by the mobster named Benny, en route to New Vegas to deliver a mysterious item known as the Platinum Chip. Benny shoots the courier in the head and leaves them for dead, taking the chip for himself. The courier is then dug out and rescued by a Securitron named Victor. A doctor named Mitchell assures you that everything is okay. He informs the player that they were shot in the head, but luckily survived. Soon, the courier collects some information about himself and the man who shot him. With this stroke of fate, the courier decided to head on a journey of revenge that takes him through towns, intriguing characters, combat encounters, and the man they wanted the most. The story is straightforward and helps give the player a huge sense of freedom. You are set on revenge, but how you traverse your journey is your own and it's exciting. You ask almost any character have they seen a man in a checkered suit. But you can still do quests, either just to help, cause chaos, or to help acquire equipment and information. This fantastically easy system directs players to where they need to go and to create connections that are unique for every single player. Though to talk about the story, you need to talk about the dialogue. And damn, it has some good writing. Now Fallout has a combat system that can take up some of your time, but talking to characters is to me about 80% of the experience. I mean hell, your first moment is with having a conversation with Doc Mitchell. Let's see what the damage is. How about your name? Can you tell me your name? Vegas has a star-studded cast, with Ron Perlman voicing the intro cinematic. War. War never changes. When atomic fire consumed the Earth, those who survived did so in great underground vaults. Benny, voiced by Matthew Perry of Friends fame. Maybe cons kill people without looking them in the face. But I ain't a fink. Dig? Victor, voiced by William Sadler of Shawshank Redemption and Green Mile fame. Just rolling along on my spurs. Looks like I just might make it to New Vegas after all and tons more from Dave Foley. <laughs> That's not funny, you getting shot in the head. Chris Christopherson. Back west, you don't see too many of these. Lakes, I mean. Natural or man-made. John Doman. I've read Mr. House's obituary. Had a high opinion of himself, didn't he? And so much more. Now, there are some normal voice actors who basically voice 15 characters with different fluctuations. But after you hear it, you can't unhear it. Now, before I talk about other subjects, I must talk about some of my favorite characters that I have enjoyed from my recent playthrough. Mr. Fantastic. What else? I'm in charge. This whole operation depends on me. No Fantastic, no power. Got the whole NCR suckling my teats, and it feels so good. A guy that literally forced himself into a situation that he only picked because he wanted to look important and be important. He's an idiot that plays a scientist. A man you literally hate but love at the same time because of how oddly funny and stupid he is. Bruce Isaac. Robbed is such an ugly word. It's more like I took care of a payroll problem for him. Also, I might have uh, sort of plowed his daughter. A little. A singer from New Reno that is hiding out because of some, well, interesting circumstances. He's a very small character, but funny to say the least. The King. Have you found anything out? Bunch of soldier boys, huh? They usually don't come around these parts since their big base is on the other side of the strip. He's literally Elvis. That is all. Overall, the story is amazing, and the characters really sell it. Without it all, Fall It New Vegas wouldn't be as cherished as it is today in the gaming community. Now, New Vegas allows you to be a female or male, what hairstyle to rock, or how long the beard should be. You then can head to the Vidomatic Vigor Tester that allows you to allocate a certain amount of skill points and abilities like strength that helps handle weapons and deal damage, perception helps accuracy, explosives and lockpicking, endurance helps health and survival, charisma helps with speech and barter, intelligence 
helps with science, repair, and medicine. Agility helps with sneak, guns, and action points for bats. Luck helps with critical chances and gambling, basically. Now, skills are basically where you can allocate points to making your skills, guess what, better. Increasing speech, sneak, guns, or even repair. Now, the most exciting aspect of leveling up is picking traits. Every other level up, you can pick one trait that helps in some way or another, from trigger discipline that makes you 20% more accurate with guns, but you shoot slower, or wild wasteland that creates wacky scenarios when you travel the wastes. Overall, leveling up is a fun aspect that is needed for most RPGs. Throughout Fallout New Vegas, you will find many towns, quests, level ups, dialogue checks, and merchants. The first town, you can find all of that, and more, in Good Springs. After you create your character in Good Springs, you are set to travel anywhere. But I strongly suggest for newcomers to explore the town to get grounded in the controls and mechanics. Basically, what I do is take everything that is not nailed down in Doc Mitchell's house and sell it at Chet's shop. Now, you will find many shops throughout the waste, and don't forget that the currency is caps. Shops will mostly have sections for weapons, apparel, aid, miscellaneous, and ammo. Now, weapons are straightforward, same as for ammo. Weapons can range from flamethrowers, sniper rifles, pistols, knives, and many other assorted weaponry. Apparel can range from gear that might boost agility, but have no damage threshold or combat armor that might be a little heavy but can protect you from any bullet except maybe death claws. Now in towns, you'll find quests, like in Good Springs, you may get a quest to fix a radio or help a town get rid of some powder gangers. Now doing quests may give you a reputation status, which can either be good or bad depending on what you did. Stealing products and killing random folk may give you negative karma which can uh, lead to people shooting you on sight in said town or faction, or having great karma, which can give you safe houses full of loot, or random people coming up to you and giving you food. Seriously though, the quests range from wiping out an entire bunker, fixing up Snuffle's leg and Sloan, or tracking down some Deathclaw eggs. Usually, bigger the town, the more the quests. But no matter where you are, you never know who will give you a quest from the beautiful place called Freeside or the inmate territory of Prim. Now the only downside of questing is the backtracking, and you will do tons of it. Fallout is literally known for the slog that is quests, but you can feel the slowness in Fallout 3 and New Vegas. Now you can fast travel to locations, but there are some places you need to walk and walk, and when you see the Mojave Desert, once, you've seen it all. Now, there isn't always just quests. You can always play a game of caravan with some folks, which I never do, or go to the strip and gamble all your money. Now, I usually do this with a high luck skill, so I never lose and get tons of caps, and maybe getting kicked out of a couple casinos. Overall, questing and merchants are intriguing and can lead to complicated or fun outcomes. The travel of all can be enjoyable as well, but pretty fast it will become a chore more than a venture. Oh man, the music in Fallout has always been a staple, from the first one with its ambient tracks, to Fallout 3 introducing the radio music to listen to while walking around the waste. Now if I played the music now, I would probably get a copyright strike. So I mostly will just say Fallout New Vegas is top tier, big iron on my hip soundtrack, and I highly recommend listening to it. Also, the ambient tracks as well. It's all fantastic. Combat is quite simple in Fallout. You either shoot from the hip or aim down sights and fire. Basically just aim and shoot. Very basic mechanics. Now, there are different types of ammo, from armor piercing, hollow point, bing bag shots, dragon breath, and so much more. Also, weapons range from shotguns, grenade launchers, sniper rifles, and pistols. You will also tackle a variety of opponents, from convicts to geckos. Enemies can have damage threshold, which is just the armor they have. 
So say uh, an opponent has Brotherhood of Steel Armor, you basically won't be able to really hit them that well because they have a great damage threshold. Some non-human enemies are the same, like Death Claws. Really, Death Claws are just dangerous. You just don't want to mess with them. You can also attack Tangos with a sneak attack, which basically adds additional damage upon the pre-existing damage from said bullet. The other aspect of combat is Vats. Vats basically allows you to stop time and pick a specific body part to damage. If you damage the legs or arms, you can cripple the enemy, causing them to move slow or miss their shots. The head can cripple them as well, but mostly kills them. You can also shoot some opponent's weapons out of their hands. Combat overall is basic and simplistic. Not too many mechanics, but not a terrible experience either. I recently decided to get the achievement The Whole Gang's Here, since I had never gotten it until now. It was fun to experience every companion quest and dialogue option. When I used to play, I always picked Boone because he could snipe things instantly and was super reliable. The quest to get him is depressing, but in a way, badass. The only thing to be warned about him is, well, he'll snipe every legion in existence. But me and the homies hate slavers. The other companions I would rock with Boone would either be Rex, an epic robotic dog that chomps at people's ankles, or Edie, a robot that you cannot understand but shoots lasers that evaporates any foe. A companion that I found out that I still do not like is Lily, a grandma super mutant with memory issues. Now while she is powerful and could probably bake me cookies, she keeps thinking I am her grandson, and her companion quest is tedious and completely annoying to wait for, so I never use her. Now Arcade is an epic dude. He's voiced by the epic Zachary Levi, smart, good with guns, voiced by Zachary Levi, hates the Legion, and guess what? Voiced by Zachary Levi. Veronica is epic because she punches things super hard and is with the Brotherhood of Steel. I think she has the best companion quest out of them all because she is a conflicted character with ideologies. She has a hard time holding on and changing. She's just well-rounded and just awesome. Cassidy, or Rose of Sharon Cassidy, is a woman I would simp for. Yeah, that's right, this woman is fantastic. She has a no-care attitude that can shoot, a conflicted background, an awesome quest line. She is basically Boone, but female form, and to be honest, has the best ending slide if you pick NCR Yes Man. She has my heart. Now, I left the best for last. Raul, voiced by Danny Trejo. I never experienced his dialogue or questline, but when I did, I could just not stop eating it up. He literally made me laugh out loud for some of his quips he said. I also quite enjoyed his tragic background story. Now while depressing, it gives a depth that you can just never expect from a quick-witted gunslinger gentleman. It was a very western man with no name style character, and I loved it. Overall, all companions are fantastic, with no downside. For only having 18 months to create Fallout New Vegas, comparably to Fallout 3's 6 years, it's impressive how much content they created and how much more they could have achieved. And you can see all that in the main faction quests that make up the four endings of New Vegas, which is NCR, Legion, House, and Yes Man. Now the most cut content of these four endings is the Legion. Which is tragic, because even though I hate slavers and the racists that make up the Legion, it'd be way more entertaining to have just more content for them. Make it a more fleshed out experience of content. And sticking on the Legion, they're basically the shit end of the stick for endings. Everyone either dies, enslaved, or swallowed up into the ranks of Caesar's reign. Women are used for baby makers, nothing more, and children are raised to be murderous foes. It is a crappy ending that is not fun at all. The NCR, which is one of the better endings, basically has New Vegas fall under a democratic rule that taxes the hell out of people, basically all governments these days. But minus that, they help unite people under one banner, which is better than chaos under Legion. But not sure if it is better than the other endings. 
House and Yes Man is basically freedom to all and kicking out Legion and NCR rule in the Nevada Territory. It's just under House, the Snow Globe Man, you basically work for him but have all the benefits that he may give. As of Yes Man, he basically just helps you free everyone and you take over the strip and rule them all with an iron fist. Now each ending has its controversies and alternative paths and I can't decide what is the best outcome for you. You can destroy everything or be kind to all, which I think makes Fallout Fallout. And well, it's cool for it. When playing Fallout New Vegas on PC, I remembered all the good and bad memories I had playing it on my Xbox 360. From the janky combat mechanics, repetitive traveling for quests, the excellent voice acting, and the marvelous quest lines. I remember all the music and where special locations are. It is a great game that I will cherish for years to come, and maybe one day experience the actual Mojave for myself. Where the big horners roll.